Good evening and welcome to the iRacing Esports Network. Welcome to Sakuba and another round of the BSR MX5 Winter Series. Chaz Draycott here with Tom Jacobs in the commentary booth, Alex Simpson on the cameras. And we've just got to the end of qualifying, so we do have to very quickly fly through the grid as uh, we have done a couple of times before. Steve Hefford and Pete Van Gogh put a uh, Simlab racing front row in front of us with Charlie Summers, Brian Holmes and Adam McNally there with uh, XI Energy Esports 4th and 5th. Jamie Ayres, another Simlab racing car in 6th. Alex Cherney, 7th with his teammate Luke Cooper in 8th. Ryan Walker, another Exite Energy car there in 9th with Dave Hampson, 10th. Flying through the rest of the field, we've got Ashley Beer, Jack Ashton, Kip Stevens, Craig Williams, Josh Thompson, 15th. Benjamin Mears, top of the AMS. Max Wright, Jordan Giddings, Carl Jackalette, Nick McCarron, Jerome Ersom, David Ayres, Billy Rose, Mick Barry, Jordan McGlone, Roy Viverke, Anthony Ainsworth, Scott Malcolm, Jason Cooper, James McRitchie, and the cars that didn't set laps were Rob Graham, Carl Hardy, Taylor Lane, Dries Nice, Alan McCain, Nathan Davis, and Tom. Small, uh, little tight, twisty track tonight for these uh, small, twisty little MX-5s, I suppose. It should be a good laugh to this one. Yeah, it should be, shouldn't it? I think um, Sakuba's always a track that's been uh, embedded in us from the Forza days, so I think the uh, MX-5 boys should make it good as we wait for Steve Hefford and Pete Van Gogh to grid up. Um, but yeah, I think tonight, Chaz, it should be an interesting one. Bit of a smaller grid tonight with only 36 cars out there. Uh, but it should make for some really tight racing. And of course, even if it is a uh, bit of a smaller grid than what we had last time out, it's uh, still quite a lot of cars to try and squeeze around this circuit, especially when they start to get spread out. So it's good to see Steve Hefford on the uh, front row of the grid again, especially Peter Van Gogh. Simlab will be very happy with that after uh, a bit of a mixed uh, meeting at Monza last time out. I actually had a quick chat with Nick McCarron uh, before the race, who is in 20th on the grid at the moment. His cable for his uh, VR headset failed on him uh, in the middle of the week, so he's racing on a single uh, monitor this uh, this evening, so he's hoping not to take anyone out. But the lights are coming on now then for the first race of four this evening. Steve Hefford will lead the field up the hill, lights out and away they go. They did not stay on for long. Plumes of smoke either side. The guys on the outside come to the inside to try and defend Charlie Summers in third, looking nice and racy with the two Excite cars behind him. Tries to carry the speed around the outside. Steve Hefford really, really giving it everything on the dust on the outside there. It looks like he's going to maintain the lead. Summer's challenging for second, though, as they go up to the hairpin for the first time. It seems, Tom, like everyone in the background has got through cleanly. Yeah, everyone seems to get through all right, haven't they? Um, don't see any issues in the background there. Everyone getting streaming through nice and easily. So Hefford does lead the way then from Charlie Summers and Pete Van Gogh. Brian Holmes going well in the XI Energy Esports car, the number 58 car there. He has a little look up the inside of Adam McNally. And I think he's got that move done there, Chaz. So Brian Holmes at the moment looks to be on quite a charge here. He's going to be looking forward to try and get towards the front runners as we've got one of the Simlab cars there. Moving down the grid, that's Ashley Beard going slowly there. So not sh too sure. Is that? No, that's Pete Van Gaal, sorry. Uh, not too sure what's happened to him. I think it might have been a slowdown there, Chaz. Yeah, I'm not quite sure where he picked that up, to be honest, whether he cut the chicane. He's got Jordan Giddings and the Beast Racing car going around the outside of him now. Benjamin Mir is still leading the AM category just in front of him there in the number 13 Automat car. But a real shame for Peter Van Gogh there. Um, starting from the front row of the grid, it's, uh, you can not see him do it that often this season, so he'll be a bit gutted about that. But hopefully he can get the, uh, get the positions back up. But it's nice to see here two very pretty black and blue cars on the screen at one time, I suppose, as he charges at Benjamin Mears. Jordan will be praying that... Uh, they get together and cause a bit of contact. The sun comes out. Just look at these guys weaving around this tight, twisty circuit. This is great already. This is just going to be a very, very uh, compact evening of racing. Four races for you, of course. And this just being the first of it. Steve Hefford on the outside there. And Brian Holmes now, Tom, hoping to capitalise on Charlie Summers and uh, Steve himself having a battle. Yeah, Steve Hefford and uh, Charlie Summers up front uh, battling nice and hard, which, as you say, is playing into the hands of Brian Holmes. He's all over the back of him. As the cars kick it up on two wheels over the kerb. And we see there Steve Hefford going a bit wide. Brian Holmes getting massively out of shape as well. Um, so the guy's fighting really hard at the moment. And uh, it's quite an easy track to drive, but to drive, half to, uh, drive fast sorry, and master is one other thing. We're on board now with Brian Holmes in the number 58 Excite Energy Esports car. And he goes in a bit deep. He's right up the back of the Swift Cooper Esports car in front. But doesn't 
but uh, rightly doesn't try and go for the dive there, Chaz. So, um, yeah, I think so far the guy's driving really nice and cleanly. And we haven't had any major incidents, have we? But uh, I have noticed as well, uh, number 47, Josh Thompson, didn't grid there in P15. Um, he's normally one of the favourites to take wins in this series. So uh, not sh too sure what's happened to Josh at the moment. Look, I mean, look at that stream of cars coming down the back straight now. Not much between them. And uh, yeah, I think this tonight's going to provide some really energetic and fast racing. Yeah, it certainly is. And uh, you can just see on the, uh, on the right hand side of your screen there, the little mini map of this mini circuit. You can see all the green cars are the AM category machines and the blue ones are the pros. On our little timing tower on the left, that is designated by the strips that are next to their names. And uh, we do tend to sort of dive in and out of the battles. We've got a great battle for the lead in the AM category, actually. 15th, 16th and 17th is Mias Giddings and Chakalette. But Charlie Summers, Tom, he's just all over the back of Steve Hefford. And you've got to think it's going to be a case of when, not if. Yeah, he's going to make him work for it, isn't he? And he'll be looking in his mirrors as, as well to look back at the likes of Holmes and McNally. But, um, yeah, I think he could get the move done here. But we know how good a driver Steve Heffer can be and how good he is in defence. He gets right on the back of him coming through the last hairpin. And, uh, wow, he was close there, wasn't he? I'm surprised he didn't take any paint off. But um, what we've said previously before the MX-5 is how strong the slipstream is. But... Here, Chaz, I think it's going to come more down to skill in the end of the day uh, just because of how tight and twisty it is. Yeah, when we saw Brian Holmes a minute ago having to put more lock on and break halfway around corners just to try and avoid hitting the car in front, it's a real sort of... Um, you get like a concertina effect into every single corner. You can see it with these three now. Brian's just got to get out of it just so he doesn't tip the back of Charlie Summers' car into a spin. Side by side behind them there, We've got Jamie Ayres and Alex Cherney side by side as they come into the hairpin. Cherney on the outside, Ayres on the inside. Looks like that Cherney's not going to get that done there. But yeah, like you say, Tom, it's, it's going to be more down to skill. They haven't got the slipstream helping them out this week. And uh, it's going to be a nice change for the guys, actually. So that might be why we see a couple of different results, because some of these guys are really good at uh, mastering the, the slipstream and knowing when to sort of go for it, when to hold back and so on. But... This is going to be out and out racing tonight and I'm absolutely loving it already as we look a bit further down the field. Here's Jason Cooper making his way through the field. He's gained 10 places, now 11 as he goes past your own Urson. He started 29th on the grid, so I think he was one of the guys that didn't set a lap, but yeah, unfortunately uh, not where he wanted to be at the beginning, but you can see now he's making his way through very well. The next target is Carl Jackalette, who is third in the AM category. You can see the field just starting to spread out a little bit on that mini-map now. And... Um, just to bring you in as well, Alex, um, we've seen a lot of these guys racing together before, especially the lads that are up the front, but do you agree that it's going to be a bit more of a, uh, a skill test tonight on the tight and twisted circuit? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, we haven't got that huge slipstream to get them right alongside, have we? So, yeah, I think definitely going to make a, quite a big difference. You can see Jackalette now. He's going to be thinking he's got to defend from... Uh, Jason Cooper but if he plays it smart enough he should probably actually let him go Tom because he's in a bit of a separate battle obviously with him being an am and Jason being a pro um, it could help him onto the back of uh, Giddings and then maybe even Ben Mears for the, uh, the lead in am yeah I think you need to choose your battles you see Cooper going up the inside now uh, Jacolette didn't really didn't really fight too much going into that but it's like the series that we race in Traz with World GT and other things like that you need to pick the battles of the drivers you're racing with there's no point say if myself has got the likes of I don't know Ash Sutton coming up behind me who's battling battling for a championship win or Nicole Foggy there's no point in me just you know putting it tooth and nail and trying to defend into every corner because eventually they're going to get past and I'm just going to lose time um, so it really is all about lo looking after your battles and looking after the car as you see Cooper goes past Giddings there um, and he'll be trying to get make his way through the AM guys to get as far up as he can. But um, it's a fierce battle in midfield, isn't it, with the AM guys at the moment. You've got Muse, Giddings and Jacolette as well. And they're all fighting really well here. So, uh, yeah, I think the AM series at the moment has been my favourite so far to watch. Um, it's the same in F1. Sometimes we get, uh, see one of the cars in the back, I think it was Hampson, wasn't it? Yeah. It went a little bit wide. It's the same in F1. I think sometimes you get a lot more midfield battles as we see Summers now looking up the inside of Steve Hefford coming into the last corner. And this is one where you've really got to stick the car, puts it up on the curb. You've got to be brave through here not to upset the car. And it looks like Charlie Summers has got it done. But Steve Hefford does fight back. He looks as a little looked up to the outside of the car. No, he doesn't make the move done. So Charlie Summers is now your race leader 
in the number 36 Swift Cooper Esports car. Behind him, Steve Hefford and Brian Holmes, Chaz, just biding his time and waiting for the uh, waiting for the right oh. moment. As we see Hefford going up the inside again. So the lead changes again. Twice in a lap, and it's brought Brian Holmes into play as well. And Holmes is just going to follow Hefford mm -hmm. through. And I think he's got that move done. So Summer's losing out there. What a brilliant move that was. That was fantastic by Brian Holmes. Steve just opened the door for him. Brian, really opportunistic stuff and sticks it down the inside. But Brian's looking really racy tonight. So I'm sure he's going to uh, try and go for the win in this one. You'd be daft not to. But really aggressive stuff by Steve Hefford there. You could see as soon as they got onto the straight, he just wanted to find the gap again on Summers. And he sort of sold him the dummy to the inside. Summers got defensive. And I think that helped him with the run as they went up towards the hairpin. As you just see on the timing tower on the left, Cooper has now got ahead of Mias. So the three ams at the top of that category are able to battle a little bit of a spread down the uh, down the field now as you can see seventh to eighth there's quite a big gap that is uh, ryan walker to craig williams there's about 2.4 second gap between those guys you can just see the lap times on the left no one really setting personal best at the moment they are all battling harder and harder but this scrap for the top three places is absolutely brilliant as summers goes down the inside then Holmes now on the defence and uh, Summers is going to obviously try and do what Brian did to him a lap ago but Brian's committed to the inside and he's got it there but oh Summers has got his nose down the inside nearly making contact surely Brian on the inside again here but this is fantastic racing Tom nice and frantic stuff and I mean we were saying before this evening Zakuba's not really a track that we'd ever really choose for, for many series but it seems that this car track combo is going to be an absolute belter over the course of the evening yeah, I think it is, isn't it? Um, yeah, we were saying that we don't really like it as, Ho as uh, Holmes comes under pressure again from Charlie Summers. <laughs> Holmes is sticking it around the outside, puts it nice and wide as they come into turn one. I don't think Summers is going to get the move done this time, though he's not, so the places don't change. But yeah, I think for low-powered stuff, it seems to be um, a, a really nice track, actually. Um, I don't really like... I think uh, we did some testing in the Formula Renault 3.5 and GT stuff around here and it doesn't really suit those kind of cars but for stuff like this it's absolutely brilliant and you can see why when you've watched the old school 90s Japanese videos of low powered MX-5 sideways through the last corner um, you can see why they love it so much yeah definitely it's it's a track that has a niche that will fit it and I think the MX-5 slots right into that and uh, hopefully for Steve Hefford, Charlie Summers is going to uh, slot into Brian Holmes at some point and just get rid of him. But you've got to think, though, they've both got a teammate in reserve in the background, and Adam McNally and Alex Cherney. The Excite Energy Sports cars up there once again near the front of the field. We were, all three of us were at the Autosport International show on the weekend and saw the Excite Energy stand. They had a massive, uh, massive truck there with their energy drinks on sale and uh, the Dirt Rally, I think it was Dirt Rally 2 on the simulators as well. It was brilliant stuff, great representation of sim racing there this weekend. As we look further down the order, that's Rob Graham. He's trying to have a scrap with Jordan McGlone in his traditional uh, bright yellow MX-5. We see him week in, week out. Since joining, actually, Tom, he joined the uh, the Monday Cup with these guys back at Daytona a couple of months ago. And he's actually been doing very well in the AM category as uh, Mr. McGlone. He's done uh, a solid job so far because in his first meeting, he wasn't that quick. Well, well, he, well, I'll say that. There's a commentator's curse for you. He goes wide at turn one. <laughs> No, I think he's he's come through, hasn't he? And I think this this is what we say about this series, um, especially the AM series. Just gives the guys a lot more experience to try to start in racing uh, neck and neck with each other and wheel to wheel. And then eventually, you know, they can obviously still do MX-5s and go on to faster and more, um, more professional series. But I think MX-5s is like the F3 stuff in real life. It just it provides such exciting racing for relatively low power stuff and gives these drivers the experience to then go on to... Um, bigger and better things but yeah I, it, it's a great series for me and it honestly is I think one of my favourites um, on the iRacing service as I'm sure it is for you guys at home as well and we've had uh, your own Urson pop up into the chat saying he is actually an AM driver um, so he's in the battle as well so it is a big stream of AMs at the moment Benjamin Mears still leading the way in that battle but we can see just in front of Rob Graham there is Roy Viverke and Mick Barry having a good ding-dong into Turn 1. It looks like the front end of those cars have had a bit of a ding-dong as well because there's uh, damage <laughs> on both of them. But, yeah, they're giving it everything. Still side by side as they go towards the hairpin. Nearly kissing wing mirrors. Mick Barry looks like he's about to concede the place, but sells him the dummy. Nope, Viverke down the inside. Managed to get it done, but look at that. He tried to get the cutback anyway. Wow, OK, here's the lead. This is the situation up front. Holmes down the inside of Summers, McNally down the inside of Hefford, Holmes to the front, 
McNally trying to get on the podium, trying to go with his teammate. Cherney and Ayres are going to be in this as well. Two and a half minutes to go, Tom. It'd be a bit of a, uh, almost a rhetorical question of who's your money on, but I don't know if we'd get an answer yet. It's just a bit manic now. Yeah, I don't really have an answer for you at the moment. Um, Brian Holmes is looking really racy, isn't he? But then look at Hefford and you, Summers in the back as well. And it's bringing the other guys into it. Jamie Ayres is biding his time a little bit at the back, but he's looking racy as well. So there's a bit of contact going into there. Some paint flies. And I think when the new collision model comes in, we'll get bits of bumper flying off and things like that. So um, this is absolutely brilliant racing. I think it's some of the best racing I've seen from this series um, so far this season. As uh, Summers has, tries to go around the outside of Brian Holmes puts out a bit too wide that's brought Steve Hefford back into play now um, the cars are looking a bit bruised and battered so they'll have to get the duct tape out when they get back to the garages <laughs> but here we go then they're too wide going into the last corner Summers is going to try and go around the outside of Brian Holmes but I don't think he's quite got the momentum Hefford's going out really wide now onto the Ooh. grass the car steps out as well and I, this is really too close to call as we go on board now with Steve Hefford he goes to has a little look up the inside of Charlie Summers. But um, yeah, Chaz, I think at the moment this really is anyone's guess. It really is. Just one little bit of contact could end it all, especially at the hairpin. If you just nudge the rear corner of the car in front, then it's going to go around. Steve, big save on the exit there. Fantastic car control. But this track has really thrown up a great race so far, and I can't wait to see the other three. Don't forget, we do have three other races similar to this to come up on the iRacing Esports Network tonight, so stick around. Holmes is a bit slow out of there. He's broken early onto the hairpin. But this is just... Oh, Steve's a bit wide on exit now. And you've got to think whether the cars behind can capitalise on that. We've got to get one more lap after this one then. Because the timer won't quite get to 15 minutes when they get out the final corner. Holmes still defending for his life. You can see Steve flicking the car in, trying to get it to just turn as best he can. Using all of the Astro Turf on the outside. Bit of the grass. Charlie Summers... I tell you what, Tom, he's not giving up, is he? He's just so determined to get this win as he's down the inside and he's finally... Oh, makes a bit of contact with Holmes. Holmes is chucked a little bit sideways. Summers is in the lead. It wasn't really malicious contact, but he's managed to get the job done now and hopefully for him, Steve Hefford's going to give a, uh, a real good sort of hard time to uh, Brian Holmes and he's going to just sort of take the, uh, take the pressure off, but it doesn't look like Brian's going to let that happen, is he? Millimetres off the back of him. Three more corners to go. This is just manic, manic racing, even in the background as well. McNally, Ayres is off on the grass. He's fighting with Cherney Heffer around the outside of Holmes. One more corner to go, Tom. Yeah, I'm not, I don't, really, not really sure if I can actually call this. I can't even get my words out. So Brian Holmes, P2. Steve Heffer behind him in P3. And you've got mid there, Mr. Charlie Summers behind him. Oh. Heffer looks out a little bit to the right. I think they made contact there. Going into the last corner. Brian Holmes then. They are three wide now. Going through the last corner. There's a lot of contact there. It pushes Charlie Summers out wide. I think Brian Holmes has just managed to get it from Steve Heffer. But wow. <laughs> what a finish to a race. That's a Cuba then. That was absolutely unbelievable. And probably some of the best racing I've seen, even in real life and sim. That was just unbelievable. What a finish. That was amazing to watch. Incredible commitment by Steve Heffer to get it down the inside. And really respectful that he didn't make contact until it was, well, there was no option really. They just sort of naturally squeezed, but none of them went around. Really good scrap across the line there. Hampson nearly beating Rob Graham over the line, only just missing out. It was Carl Hardy that finished ahead of them. Jason Cooper involved as well. Great drive by Jason in that race, actually. He managed to gain... Where is he? I can't see him on my screen, actually. Oh, he actually only gained three places there, so I think he had a bit of an issue earlier on. I, think he, I thought he was a bit higher up than that, but what a race by these boys up front. That was immense. Absolutely immense. I mean, for the last sort of four or five laps there, Tom, I was just clenching my fists and grinning my face off. I just... That was really, really exciting racing. Great stuff to watch. And, well, that's surely got to set us up for three more, even more exciting races as the conditions change as well. But great result for Excite Energy Esports with uh, Brian Holmes there, especially after his recent injury as well. He uh, severely damaged his knee. And he's, well, he's bounced back. And, well, here's the uh, inevitable donuts. As there's the results, Tom, if you'd like to do the honours. Yeah, so Brian Holmes is your race one winner of the evening for Excite Energy Esports. What a battle that was between Steve Heff and Charlie Summers, who came second and third. They are your podium guys. Behind them was Adam McNally in fourth with Alex Cherney in fifth. Jamie Ayres in sixth. Nice drive from him. 
with Ryan Walker in seventh, who also had quite a nice drive as well. Um, Craig Williams in eighth, Jack Ashton in ninth, Luke Cooper in tenth, Kip Stevens in eleventh, Pete Van Gaal in twelfth, with Max Wright in thirteenth, uh, Benjamin Muse in fourteenth, Carl Jacolet fifteenth. I'll just add, Benjamin Muse is your AM race winner as well. Uh, your own Ursum in sixteenth, James McRitchie in eighth, in seventeenth. Sorry, uh, David Ayres finished home in eighteenth, Billy Rose in nineteenth, with Jordan Giddings in twentieth, Roy Viverke twenty-first, Mick Barry in twenty-second, Michael Hardy twenty-third, twenty-fourth was Rob Gray. Dave Hampson in 25th. Jason Cooper for uh, Swift Cooper Energy Esports team is in 26th. And I've, I've lost my grid, guys. <laughs> oh, there we go. It's, it's back. There we go. Sorry. Uh, Nick McCarron in 27th. Jordan McGlone in 28th. Scott Malcolm in 29th. Anthony Ainsworth in 30th. And then your non finish was Ashley Beard, Drees Nice, uh, Taylor Lane, Nathan Davis, Alan McCain, and Josh Thompson, who didn't start. Just trying to see how on the ball you were, mate. That was all. Just disappearing nice and quickly. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> Cracking first race of the night, though. Plenty of action, plenty of chaos. And to be fair, I was not. I'm not going to lie to you. I was expecting quite a hefty incident at some point in there. Um, such a narrow circuit, Tom. It was. It was almost sort of inevitable, but it never came. No, it did. It didn't, did it? And. Um... It was just provided absolutely fantastic racing. It really did, and I'm I'm honestly shocked. And I take back what I said before we even came on comms that I didn't think <laughs> it was going to be a very good circuit. I whispered to Chaz saying I don't really like Sakuba, and uh, yeah, I think I do, especially when it's when it's in low powered stuff. I think it really comes into its own. So uh, yeah, great race, and I can't wait wait for the next ones this evening. And of course, we will have the uh, spinny wheel any second with Mr. Simpson. For the reverse grid, of course, which will determine the uh, the grid for race two. Now, I believe it's anyone that was on the lead lap or one lap down. Uh, Ashley Beard was 14 laps down, and then everyone else was on the lead lap. So pretty much all the way down to 30th place will be eligible for the reverse grid, Alex. Yeah, let's give it a spin and see what it's going to be. Of course, full, four full reverses as well. So lots of opportunities for the guys at the back to get onto the front row. One of them might be coming into play. Will it? Will it make it? Yeah, I think it's going to. Oh, it just ticks over. Full minus four it is. Okay, so a full grid would have been 30th place. And if we take off four, that puts Jason Cooper on pole position alongside David Hampson as well. So that's a fantastic front row with Rob Graham and Carl Hardy, the two AM drivers behind them as well. Mick Barry will line up fifth. So if you join me, Tom and Alex, back on the iRacing Esports Network in about 10-15 minutes' time, we'll bring you race two of the evening, and let's hope it's as good as the other one. Don't go away.
Welcome back to the iRacing Esports Network and Zakuba and the BSR MX5 Winter Series. Chaz Draycott here with Tom Jacobs and Alex Simpson for the second of four races this evening. Uh, we've got a quick run through of the grid once again. We can see the difference in the conditions for this one. Jason Cooper and Dave Hampson on the front row with Rob Graham, Carl Hardy, Mick Barry, Viverke, Giddings, Rose, Ayres and McRitchie making up the top ten. And it's Jerome Ersum, Carl Jacolette, Benjamin Mears, Max Wright, Pete Van Gaal, Kip Stevens, Luke Cooper, Jack Ashton, Craig Williams, Ryan Walker. That's a great top 20. Jamie Ayres, Alex Cherney, Adam McNally, Charlie Summers, Steve Hefford and Brian Holmes. Race one winner is down in 26th. Nick McCarran, John McClone, Scott Malcolm, Anthony Ainsworth, Ashley Beard, Taylor Lane, Joe McDonald and Mikey Key makes up the back of the grid. And Tom, if anything is uh, to go by from that first race, this should be an absolute corker. Yeah, it should be, shouldn't it? And I'm really looking forward to this one. A lot of fast guys at the front. All the five red lights are on and away we go then. All the guys getting off to a really nice start there. We see Jason Cooper and it's Dave Hampson did get a corker as well, didn't he? He's going to try and put one up the inside into turn one and he has a little oh. bit of a mistake going in. So it's unfortunate for him. He's fallen back a bit there. So Jason Cooper does lead and I can hear a little bit of collisions in the background. But everyone seems to be through cleanly. Yes, oh, they are. <laughs> There's some more collisions there as well. Um, oh, guys bunch up. And it's Mears off in Williams the infield and Williams is round and Stevens as well and Chaz is calling him as well as me <laughs> <laughs> and oh. Uh, oh, a bit of bit of RG party there to go with it as well at the end reminds me of a certain spa race in 04 when a Jordan just decided to join in for the sake of it as you see have a little look then we've got Jordan Giddings there Think of Jordan. 29 yeah <laughs> beast racing car he's up into fifth place now at the moment so having a quite a good race for him Charlie Summers though Chaz up 10 places already from the start yeah great start for him up to 14th place overall there he is getting involved he's got uh, David Ayres then well I was going to say on the outside but he's behind him now gets the move done nice and quickly up to 13th overall for Charlie Summers he'll be looking for more points after his, uh, well he came third in the end in that first race but what a battle we saw towards the end of that one if you've only just joined us you will need to go and have a look back at that at the end of the evening because you have missed an absolute belter. Hopefully this will be just as good as we see Rob Graham and Peter Van... Uh, sorry, not Peter Van Gaal. It's uh, Ryan Walker, isn't it? Or it's, no, it's Jack Ashton. I always get the 97 and 98 the wrong way around. And uh, there is everlasting proof of that. But Ashton around the outside, defending the place. Gets ahead of Peter Van Gaal and now Summers ahead of Van Gaal as well. I think Peter's actually got a couple of issues there because that car's very damaged on. Yeah, I think... Um the, the damage on these cars does affect them quite a lot, doesn't it? Look at Pete Van Gaal's car, looking more like a banger race than anything else. It seems might have a slowdown again for Pete Van Gaal there. So unfortunate for him, although he might be retiring the car due to the damage. See Michael Barry out very wide, and that's brought Jordan Giddings into play. And Michael Barry, where's he going? He's off on a golf oh. course. And a lot of people around. Oh, that's a big hit. Jackalette and right, that is. Yeah, Jackalette and right there, as Chaz has called it once again. Oh, Mick Barry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's just kicking off. Yeah. It's yeah. kicking off. Oh, no. Oh, one of the XI right cars. That's Brian Holmes in the background in the number 58 XI car as well. So all the guys playing a bit of pinball and having a lot of argy bargy out there at the moment, Chaz. So, um... Not as, much, not as uh, respectful racing as we saw in race one, but still as exciting as ever. Oh, it's like a go-kart race. It's brilliant, but it's a shame to see so many incidents, but it's bound to happen on such a uh, small stretch. Wow, Walker sends it. <laughs> Ryan Walker giving it the full send up the inside. Rob Graham doesn't get too much damage and uh, gets away with it, although Walker's trying to go back down the inside. He's almost, well, he's off the track. Really trying everything. These boys are getting a bit frantic here. You'd think this race was two laps long, like the uh, the good old days of Forza, but Walker's got it done. <laughs> to be fair, he used the grass and he's ahead of them. Brilliant stuff. Journey's going to be trying to battle with him as well now. They're the, uh, the back end of the top 10. Ruin Ursum is still up there as well, actually, in the uh, 051 machine. Bright pink car. Steve Hefford getting involved down the inside of Graham. Graham goes wide. I think he uh, just sort of took a bit of avoiding action from that uh, inevitable incident there, but. Yeah, Steve Hefford pushing on as well. You can see the positions gained on the left-hand side of the screen. Charlie Summers, 18 places. Ashton, 11. Uh, that's uh, Walker, 11. Cherney, 12. McNally, 12. Hefford, 13. And uh, also a little bit further back from them is uh, Ashley Beard. He's gained 18 places now as well. Up to 13th overall, just behind Steve. Further down the field, that's Joe McDonald down the inside of Craig Williams. Nearly making contact. Craig keeps it committed. Joe nearly clips the back end of him there as well. 
But there's just battles as everywhere we look. Once again, there's Jordan McGlone three wide there, Tom. There's just it's never ending, as we always see with this fantastic series. Yeah, it just never ends, does it? And the guys are just fighting hard, um, not necessarily cleanly, um, but yeah, it, it brings on some really exciting racing for them. As we see, that's uh, who's that? Sorry, that's Luke Cooper going around the outside uh, through the last corner. So he's having quite a good run at the moment, actually. Chaz, he's down one place, but in terms of fighting, in terms of defending, he's having a really good one. So um, yeah, I think altogether. It's, it's going to bring an exciting evening. Obviously, race one was possibly one of the best races I think I've ever seen on iRacing. Um, and race two so far seems to be, as you say, a little go-kart race uh, with everyone shunting each other off. See one of the sim lab go, gets it massively out of shape there. And there's another cart off in the background as well. And I don't really know where they look, Chaz, at the moment. I don't know about you. No, it's just every single camera angle has just got cars in it and they're all over the place. <laughs> it's just fantastic to watch. Um, really, really chuffed that Sakuba has actually thrown up such a, uh, a good, good evening of racing for us. I mean, well, not even halfway through it yet. As we see, your own Ursa and Ryan Walker on an absolute charge with Cherney behind him. Adam McNally there and Steve Hefford. Oh, nearly contact between Ursa and Cherney. And this is going to give McNally and possibly even Hefford the opportunity to have a go. Journey late on the brakes, uh, some runs nice and wide. Nice, respectful stuff that by your own person there, but he's third in arm at the moment, so he may as well let these guys go, I think, because, well, we don't know, actually, Ashley Beard's behind him, and then he's got more arm cars, so we'll have to see. You can see the clouds above. There's some nice little reflections off the car. You might just see a bit there. There it is. The surface and the cars really nicely reflecting recently. The lighting looks great, especially there under the Dunlop Bridge. What a lovely shot that was. Through the left-hander they go then. And this happens for in a, uh, a real sort of overtaking place tonight. As Steve Hefford shows us that oh, sometimes it doesn't quite go the right way for you. Gruen Ersum does really well to keep hold of it, Tom. But we look a bit further forward now. And uh, Jordan Giddings has got Billy Rose and Charlie Summers hot on his heels. Yeah, he's got those guys for company, isn't he? He's currently running P2 in the AM class and P4 overall. So he's having a great drive out there. As well as Roy Viverke in the number 103 in front of him as well. So just goes to show though Chaz with the Am and Pro guys there isn't that much of a difference in pace between them when you bring the top running uh, Am guys in and the midfield Pro guys there's not really too much in it in terms of uh, out and out speed on the track um, which is really nice to see actually it brings everyone this is why we like this series it gets everyone involved and you never really know who's going to take the win although at the moment you've got Jason Cooper out in front and he's uh, seems to be walking away with it a little bit at the moment yeah, he was going to be uh, my pick to take this one really, really quick as Jason. And we've seen, actually, for the last uh, two meetings, he's won the fourth and final race of the night. So he's going to uh, make a nice little change and probably win the second one. I'm not going to say that he's won it yet, but we'll have to see. Eight laps to go, just over seven minutes through the race. Dave Hampson, you've got to give him a shout as well. He's doing a really good job in second place at the moment. He's been quick since he came into the championship, and uh, he's showing us that he's no slouch at all with his very lovely livery on that car. Viverke and Giddings battling, of course, for the uh, top of the AM standings as it stands at the moment. Uh, they did just that at Monza as well. So, actually, I think it was these four. I'm not sure. You were there as well, Alex. I'm not sure whether it was these four that were battling for the, uh, the top four places. I think, or was it? Oh, it was Jack McIntyre, I think, that was involved with them. But three of the top four from that last race at Monza are actually involved in this one now. Yeah, I can't honestly remember. Like, I've been asleep since then. You should know me by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I once, the, uh, once the pe once the uh, head hits the pillow, that's it. Everything is forgotten. <laughs> well, I'll have a dig through the uh, the good old screenshots of, uh, of Monza, and I'll see whether we can uh, get that back. But yeah, what this you, is uh, what you need is someone like Adam Barth who remembers everything. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Adam's literally just he sees something once and he remembers everything about it, how old he was, and yeah, how hot it was outside, and so on. But yeah. <laughs> Great stuff, absolutely great stuff. Hopefully uh, see Adam on the iRacing Esports Network again soon as well. But we see some Excite Energy Esports cars, and well, it's the two that I always get confused, Tom. It's Ryan Walker and, uh, oh, there you go, I can't remember his name, Jack Ashton in the number 98 car. <laughs> yeah, they're having a good run, aren't they, the Excite boys at the moment. Um, we said this, I think the last round I was commentating with you, Chaz. Um, we said this that about the Excite cars. They've really come, a lot, come on a long way. 
um, in this season compared to where they were last season. It just, as I say again, from what I've said before in previous races, how much work actually goes into this. Just see Benjamin Mews and uh, Taylor Lane having a little bit of a scrap. Um, just yeah, as I say, it goes, just goes to show how much effort goes into this in terms of setup and things like that, and getting yourself together as a team. Because we know not all of us can afford to race in real life, so i racing is our is our saviour, so to speak. And um, a lot of the guys treat it as a real race series, don't they? Well, I hope they all do, in all fairness. So, yeah, I, th I think um, it's, it's nice to see them up there. And it's nice to see them battling for championships as well. It certainly is. And, um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people do take these leagues seriously. And everyone gets along as well. It's, it's a really good community behind it. Um, the weather, though, in this race has been a bit cooler for them. So we might not see as much slidey action towards the end of the race as the tyres don't go off. But this is a great train that's developing here, actually, behind Billy Rose and Jordan Giddings. Uh, with Walker, Ashton, Cherney, Hefford, McNally, and there's another Exite car in there, I believe, as well, just behind them. But this is, uh, yeah, this is going to be turning into quite a dicey little uh, fight towards the end here, Tom, with just a couple of laps to go now. Uh, we're on lap 10 out of 15, so... That just shows you how quickly those last few laps have flown by because just a moment ago I said it was eight laps left. Yeah, I think um, these races, when they're exciting, go go through relatively quickly. Um, but we do get some, some, don't we, boys, that you think, oh, my, oh my days, this is lasting hours, but it's, it's not. Um, but, yeah, I, it, it's, just, it's just one of them, isn't it? Um, especially with this circuit of... I think because it's so short um, and fast laps as well. I mean, they're, they're lapping just over one minute round here. Um, and I think it's, it's better than a track than, say, Spa for these cars um, because you've got such a long lap there that it's, as we say, the slipstream comes into play, whereas this is a lot more tactical as well. And I think that's what's made these races around here this evening so exciting and has, has made it so go, go through so quickly. Yeah, definitely. Um... I, I sort of uh, echo what you're saying in regards to Spa, so bigger tracks don't always suit these cars. I mean, we see tracks like Road America, that's awesome for them because of the slipstream involved and it really levels the playing field, but a race like this tonight around such a, uh, a small circuit, like we were saying earlier, it's just so much more about skill and how you control the car. You can see the neon yellow gloves of Steve Hefford saving that thing on the exit there. Adam McNally right behind him now, though. But the slipstream is not going to be enough down this small straight to get there. Definitely tell you're on board with Adam McNally in the Excite Energy Esports car. That Excite Energy Blue all over it. Great for those boys to get such a good sponsorship. The stand was uh, awesome at uh, all the sport. It was a very dominating thing to see. It was massive. And I'm sure the uh, all the lads had a great time as well. They were there on the Saturdays. Oh, both late on the brakes there. McNally nearly going into the back of Hefford. And Tom, of course, loves the drink. Oh, yeah. Tom loved the drink. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Thinks the world of it. Yeah, um, but we won't delve into that too much. <laughs> well, look at this train, though, from McNally's point of view, Tom. It's got to give you a bit of confidence seeing that, but then when you see how many good drivers are involved in it, you might think, oh, I'm not going to make up too many places here unless there's an incident. Yeah, and it's, it's the same as we were just saying about the slipstream as well. doesn't come into it as much. Um, it, it's a risky track to pass on this. It's only really the hairpin that we're just going coming out of now. And the turn one, I'd say, is really your main uh, passing points here. Um, whereas you get other bigger tracks where you've got, you know, three or four throughout the throughout the uh, throughout the lap. So um, I think it's a lot more tactical for them um, when they're racing around here. But it's it's also it's also it's just it's just a nice circuit, isn't it? Really for them. Um, we we keep bleating on about it, but but it is. It's we're on. It's a brilliant race. You see the XI cars. They do touch the teammates. Touch there, and that's oh. that's uh, I think that's Rose as well. And then, oh, he's round, and we've got a car round. That is uh, Billy Rose in the triple four GT Omega racing car. And so unfortunate for him, Chaz, as he was having a really, really good run so far. Yeah, Northern Lights will be disappointed in that. Real shame for Billy. He's uh, He's been there or thereabouts all season so far. And, I mean, he was a newcomer to the championship not too long ago. And like I say, he was having a good run then. Unfortunately, he uh, got caught up in the incident, but... It's, it's going to happen around here, unfortunately. It's one of those things. But he's kept on with it, though. He's still pushing on. So it's good to see that um, that he's not determined. Uh, well, he's not sort of uh, deterred by that. As we see Cherney now really battling with Jack Ashton, trying to give it everything he's got. Just trying so hard everywhere. It's great to watch. Absolutely awesome stuff. And don't forget, we've got two more races similar to this to come up tonight. Both the same in length. 
as we see Cherney really really all over the back of Ashton now trying everything he can to get up into fifth place Hefford around the outside of McNally there on the grass pick car control this is just well it's just never ending once again the BSR MX5 winter series giving us everything Oh, that was all oh, really wide from Ashton. Great car control to keep that thing on the... Uh, well, I was going to say on the tarmac. Half the time it was off it, but you know what I mean. He <laughs> kept it pointing the right way pretty much. Um, Hefford there just flashing red on the little timing tower on the left, which means that he's gone off the track or had an incident point. But Jason Cooper, he's seven seconds up... Well, nearly eight seconds up the road from Dave Hampson, who is five seconds up the road from Viverke. But Viverke currently leading the AM battle, Tom. Yeah, he's had a great run, hasn't he? And so is Jordan Giddings. Um, they'll be looking in the mirrors and seeing these guys battling behind them and thinking, well, they can continue on doing that um, because it's it's giving me more space, essentially. I'm getting more time out of it. So, yeah, as I say, the AM guys going really well round here. And I can just say, Chaz, as well, with Ashton's uh, little bit of car control, I think that's going to make for one of the most perfect screenshots that you've ever had with it kicking up dust and... Uh, with a nice sunset in the background and clouds and stuff so uh, oh I'm looking I'm looking forward to see that one in the end but we've got a bit of an excite train behind them as well um, and who's that guy standing one of the back markers there Ainsworth, that one. yeah Ainsworth getting out the way for them as they come through and we're on our final lap and this is Jason Cooper who has had an exceptional drive hasn't he I mean we just see there Dave Hampson only just coming into shot in the background Jason Cooper rounds the final corner absolutely perfect car control the entire time uh, led from lap one from the start and he comes through to be your race two winner this evening and uh, congratulations to him that was a utterly brilliant drive yeah that was fantastic nicely controlled and he had it quite easy from the front but you've got to at least keep it on the grey stuff Jordan Giddings uh, defending slightly from Alex Cherney good result for Jordan that fourth overall he'll be happy that's second place in AM. Roy Viverke, third overall, takes an overall podium and obviously gets his uh, win in the AM category. Taylor Lane there chasing David Ayres at the end in the other Beast Racing car, running one of the different liveries. That's known as Enterprise for anyone who uh, really wants to know. Um, as we look at Scott Malcolm there chasing down, that's Nick McCarran, 24th place. He's driving on a 24-inch screen tonight rather than VR. And they cross the line together. Joe McDonald behind them in the background. And, uh, yeah, a bit, more, a bit sort of uh, more chaotic near the beginning there. A lot of incidents as we see Pete Van Gogh facing the wrong way for uh, Sim Lab. But still, really, really good racing in the mid-pack there. And uh, not so much to battle for the lead, but it doesn't really matter on the position so much. But that was, uh, yeah, nice and fierce by all the guys once again. Yeah, it was. As long as we get exciting racing, then that's what we want from this. We don't want to... I don't think anybody wants a destruction derby fest, but sometimes the odd incident thrown in really does um, really does excite stuff a lot more. As we see all the guys now peeling into the pit lane, um, some of them taking a more off-roading route than others to try and get into it. But... Um, yeah, I think that was a that was a really exciting race. I don't think you're going to top race one for a long time um, in any series, to be honest, because for me, that was one of the best races I've ever seen. So, um, But for race three and four, I know we're going to get some good races as well from these guys because they, they really know what they're doing. So here we go then for the race results. We've got Jason Cooper, a well-deserved win, who is 8.7 seconds in the end ahead of Dave Hampson in P2. Roy Viverke is your AM race winner um, in third and behind him, Jordan Giddings for Beast Racing in the number 29 car. Alex Cherney in fifth, Jack Ashton in sixth with Adam McNally in seventh. Ashley Beer behind him in in eighth with Ryan Walker in ninth. Steve Hefford in tenth. They'll be looking to uh, come through the pack a little bit more for race three. Charlie Summers in eleventh, who is your race... Uh, no, he wasn't your race one winner, was he? Um, nearly run race one, but uh, he'll be looking to come through as well. Billy Rose in twelfth, unfortunate for him. Michael Barry in thirteenth. Craig Williams in fourteenth. David Ayres in fifteenth. Sixteenth was Taylor Lane. Benjamin Muse in seventeenth. Eighteenth was J uh, James McRitchie. Nineteenth uh, was Jordan McGlone. Twentieth was Pete Van Gaul. Uh, 21st, we had Carl Hardy. Uh, 22nd, we had Jamie Ayres. 20, in 23rd place was Rob Graham. 24th was Nick McCarran. 25th was... Uh, I'm losing my time in screen. <laughs> uh, there we go. Thank you, Alex. 25th was Scott Malcolm. 26th was Joe McDonald. 27th, Max Wright. Carl Jacklett in 28th. Your own Ursum in 29th. Anthony Ainsworth in 30th. And your non finishers were Luke Cooper, Mikey Key, Brian Holmes, and Kip Stevens. Another great race, as always, then, from the wonderful BSR MX5 Winter Series.
And any second now, for the second time tonight, we should have a Mr. Alex Simpson with a reverse grid spinny wheel and the wonderful music that we uh, get to sample. Okay, yeah, indeed we do. Right, so we can see where it left off. Four minus four last time. Place your bets now. And now, uh, your own, he likes to uh, take his pick. So, uh, yeah, anyone else? We ought to do a giveaway. We ought to, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. We ought to have, like, some sort of theory sponsor or something like that. So, for anyone who guesses the right, we'll do a giveaway. Yeah. Yeah, Win some club sport V3 pedals. <laughs> Not quite. Um, well, I'll let you... I'll, I'll, say, I'll, let, your car. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you approach Fanatec, see if we can get that one uh, that one organised. But right, okay. Um, is that their chance? Let's give it a spin. Let's see where we go. Pretty small spin this time. Going to be 20th. Not going to make it to 4 minus 1. Yeah, 20th place, so relatively small compared to what we saw the last time. And that's a really, really uh, good turn of events for Pete Van Gogh. Gives him another chance to get on the front row of the grid. He's going to be on pole alongside Jordan McGlone, who we spoke about earlier. The second row is going to be James McRitchie and Benjamin Mears. And Beast Racing driver Taylor Lane will be fifth on the grid. So nice little mix of talent up there. If you join me, Alex and Tom, in 10 to 15 minutes time on the iRacing Esports Network, we'll bring you the third of four races this evening. Don't go away.
Welcome back to the iRacing Esports Network and Sakuba for the BSR MX5 Winter Series. We're in the third of four races this evening, even more overcast conditions than the second race. And uh, we've got another grid in front of you here, another reverse grid of course from last time, put Pete Van Gool on pole position alongside Jordan McGlone on the front row. James McRitchie and Benjamin Mears are third and fourth on the grid with Taylor Lane and David Ayres making up the third row. Then you've got Craig Williams, Mick Barry, Billy Rose, Charlie Summers, and the lights are actually coming on. Sorry, <laughs> they're getting away. You can hear the revs rising, off they go. Raging down to turn one. There's Pete Van Gool. And uh, Tom, we should probably, I think with overcast conditions, the guys might be used to the, uh, the track conditions for this one. So it may be a little bit more tame, but we get to see. Yeah, I think um, we might get a little bit of a whisper of a repeat of race one. Everyone through cleanly, a couple of the excited cars, Jordan Giddings there nearly getting caught up in that. But um, yeah, I think it's going to, you're going to have more grip in colder conditions. That's the way that iRacing works. Um, so yeah, it should provide a grippier track for them. We might see lap times coming down a little bit. They might might break into the one minute ones. Um, and if you're really quick into the high one minute, uh, so one minute point nine sort of thing. So. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna. It should be a good race for all the guys. Everyone seems to be through nice and cleanly. We got a car off in the background. Chaz will be able to tell you which one that is, just because it's four pixels wide. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Dave Hampson. That's my guess. Yeah, so there we go. We've got Dave Hampson. I think off in the background. He's oh, Mick Barry. Places. Mick Barry's in the off into the wall, and that's gonna unfortunate for him. Oh, McGlone. Oh, yeah, McGlone off at the side of the track as well. Um, you don't want to be rejoining like that too much. Um, so not sure what happened to him there, Chaz, but apart from that, everyone seems to be through uh, cleanly so far. Yeah, it seems like uh, a couple of guys have lost places now. Actually, uh, Jason Cooper lost a couple of positions on the first lap. Brian Holmes is uh, at, the big, at the back of the pack. Max Wright is down there as well. But these Excite boys are having a fantastic battle towards the end of the first lap there with uh, some of the result clothing cars. They actually made contact with each other into the hairpin. So it uh, seemed to slow their progress. We look at uh, Jack Ashton now, 15th. Oh, contact, journeys around. Billy Rose stops it. Jamie Ayres clips him. And that concertina effect. Luckily, no one else got caught up in that. Oh, no, there is an Excite car around. Is that Ryan Walker? I believe facing, it is. Looks like it, doesn't way. it? Yeah. Um, there's two Excite cars facing the wrong way, actually. Yeah. Uh, if this was Toka 2, they'd be getting a DNF now. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> Ashley Beard was the other uh, one. See oh, what no. happens. Walker come across the track, take out his teammate. Jordan Giddings in there as well, manages to just come through the middle of it all. <laughs> um, I think they were lucky there that more people didn't get taken out, but Walker's still going, but the car doesn't look too healthy. Um, but out in front, Chaz, everyone seems to be uh, nice and clean at the moment. A little battle there with uh, Taylor Lane and Charlie Summers, which is a a nice little battle, but out in front, Chaz, Pete Van Gaal extending his lead at the moment to about 1.5 seconds. And uh, he's looking good so far, but I'm not going to commentate his curse him. Yeah, he, he got a bit unlucky in race one with that slowdown. Then we saw him get the same again in race two. So this is his chance at redemption. Craig Williams is in second place. He'll be happy with that at the moment. And it's the battle between Benjamin Mears and Taylor Lane for the AM category lead in third and fourth overall. But the, uh, the rejoin was... Um, a bit hindered by David Ayres and Ryan Walker they're making contra uh, contact on the grass bit of a shame to see that um, not quite sure how they managed to get to that point but there goes Charlie Summers down the inside of Taylor Lane Taylor doesn't battle him too much knowing he's a pro driver hopefully for uh, Taylor's point and uh, obviously you and me Tom obviously being part of East Racing and uh, anyone else from watching I know Brock Hopkins is watching as well good to see you Brock um, hoping that uh, Ben Mears gets slightly hindered by, uh, by Charlie Summers here so Taylor Lane can get to the front of the AM class yeah, I'm not one to call, don't want to ruin anyone's race at all, but um, yeah, I think we know how capable Taylor Lane can be and how capable Mews can be as well, so um, it could put, put them into a nice battle with each other. So we're on board now with Alex Cherney, he is on the back of Kip Stevens now, and um, this could end up as Kip Stevens disappears and then he's back again. Has a little look up the outside as Alex Cherney, that's not the way you want to get a move done round there. And you can just see there, Chaz, the amount of train that he's got in front of him. Um, we know that Alex Cherney is a fast driver. He's down four places at the moment. Um, probably just caught up in, got caught up in a bit of conflict. But um, he's got a, quite a mountain to climb. He's currently in P20. 
and chasing down the likes of Kip Stevens, Michael Barry and Alan McCain. We know how quick Alan McCain can be as well. So, uh, yeah, I think this is, is going to provide quite an interesting midfield race here. Yeah, you can see just as well Alex has brought up the uh, what we call the snake on the uh, on the track map. There's just no real massive distance between these guys, as, uh, as you just said a moment ago. There were intervals on the left-hand side on the timing tower as well. What we get on our timing screens is when the cars are within a second of each other, it starts to go uh, a yellowy colour. And, oh, Stevens and Mick Barry, the two pink cars, making contact. And Cherney says, thank you very much. I'll go around the pair of you. He's going to be on the inside for the hairpin. And what I was going to say is when the... Uh, there you go, you can see the intervals on the left. When it's under a second, it's a yellowy colour. And the closer to, uh, to them being really close together, you get a, uh, a darker orange colour and then sometimes even red as well. Um, so it shows us just how close the battles are. Van Gogh still out front. You can see the gap about a second there to uh, Williams as it's actually coming down and up. And it will fluctuate, obviously, throughout corners. Side by side then for Taylor Lane and Ben Mears. This is for the AM category lead. 13 car and the 32 car. Taylor trying everything he can. Tries to get a nice cutback. It seems to work for him. Mears is on the grass. Oh, gets a little bit out of shape. Lane's around the outside now. With that, oh, Mears more out of shape. Taylor Lane takes the AM-class lead and Adam McNally goes with him as well, Tom, into fifth place. So, got a bit of a buffer there, but I think to play it safe here, Taylor's just, well, I, think, I don't know whether that was voluntary or not, but he's let Adam McNally through. And unfortunately, Mears has gone through as well. That was a shame, Taylor. I'm, uh, I think we're going to have to have words with him for that. I think that was more our commentator's curse, actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's about you saying he's made up places. And um, then he's, he's given it away again. But we know how quick Taylor can be. I know he'll be back right on to the back of Mears pretty quickly. As he, we won't be doing stuff like that, Whoa. getting it out wide. <laughs> he's got Hefford. Look at Hefford as well. Just giving it the full rally cross. Giving it the full pet of Solberg coming out the last corner. And um, that won't be doing him any favours, will it? But uh, as we see the lap times as well, Chaz guys lapping a couple of guys even in the one minute ones at the moment um so we see the times have come down a little bit in these colder conditions that'll be doing well for them as you see at the top of your screens there pro and am I mean, that's the average lap time so one minute one five for pro and a one minute 1 1.9 for am so as we were saying before Chaz, between the am and pro drivers there isn't actually that much in it at the end of the day um so it's nice to see that, you know, the AM guys can hold their own. Steve Hefford does get the move done on Taylor Lane. And Taylor will be kicking himself in that car at the moment, Chas, because uh, he keeps making the odd mistake, doesn't he? Yeah, I think he's just going a bit deep on the brakes there. Um, he's done that a couple of times now. Um, and it was indeed the, uh, the fastest laps in class for that. So only four tenths in it. And I mean, it is a short lap, but even still, we, uh, we can see bigger differences than that a lot of the time. This is the battle at the front then. Van Gogh has been caught here by Craig Williams and uh, Charlie Summers, so this is going to get a little bit more interesting than we first made out here because we thought that Van Gogh was going to run away with it, and it seems that's not going to be the case. You see nice little reflections off the windscreens from the uh, the sun that's trying to break through these clouds, but but really overcast conditions, and you never know. We might see the sun break through for a nice sunset finish to the evening, but while we focus on this third race it's uh, these three at the front fantastic scrap so far Williams really starting to put Van Gogh under pressure gets the nose down the inside Van Gogh's got the momentum though and Charlie Summers is going to try and have a, uh, a quick go at him as well don't forget of course to subscribe to the uh, to the channel if you want to see future broadcasts and of course to Apex Racing TV who we, uh, we broadcast for and we do also stream on our uh, Facebook pages as well so we've got quite a lot going on this evening and you can also click the little bell icon when you subscribe to the iRacing Esports Network and you'll be notified of future videos as well as a great cutback by Craig Williams there at, the turn, um, at turn one, sorry. Charlie Summers is trying to tuck himself in there behind the number 39 machine of Peter Van Gogh. And uh, these guys, as you said before, Tom, they seem to be playing it really tactical here. They're just sort of uh, trying to make the most of the space, aren't they? Yeah, and no, I think that's the way you've got to go around here. You see Craig Williams does, he hits Pete Van Gogh. And I think they've both got away with it, but it said Charlie Summers. I think he went over the grass to capitalise on that as well. And um, those boys very lucky to get away with that. As we watch the replay then, we go on board with Charlie Summers. He was right up behind Pete Van Gogh, and those two just touched. And he, yeah, he had to make make for the, uh, the make-out sca escape road there for him, <laughs> uh, just to get that done. So, but um, great. It wasn't great driving by Pete Van Gogh and Craig Williams, but it was a great recovery for them. 
And um, yeah, now they're right on the back of Charlie Summers again. So it didn't hinder them too much. And it doesn't look like the cars are too damaged either. So uh, yeah, I, it, I, I'm glad to see that this battle can continue and we can continue having a, a decent race three, which we seem to be having. Taylor Lane in the background there is right on the back of Benjamin Mews again at the back of your screens. So those guys are fighting again as Craig Williams gets a little bit out of shape coming through the hairpin there. And uh, this is shaping up to be a great one, isn't it, Chaz? I'm really enjoying this at the moment. Oh, I definitely. This is brilliant stuff. Um, just saying then as well, um, I've noticed that Mr. Robert Hartley, the uh, MX-5 legend himself, has pointed out that Adam McNally is closing in on those guys. So might even be a four-way scrap at the end. Still five laps to go as we look at this battle further down the order. Nick McCarran, um, that in front of him now is McRitchie. He's just gone through and he's chasing down Ellis uh, Stevens and Joe McDonald. Nice little midfield scrap there. Still inside the top 20 as well. As they come onto the back straight now. Stephen's got a good run out of there. There's Jamie Ayres. Very crumpled MX-5 as he tries to go around the outside of Jack Ashton. Easier said than done, but if someone could do it. It'd be Jamie Ayres. Kicks up a little bit of dust. Carries the momentum. And I think he's actually got it done, Tom. What a manoeuvre. Awesome stuff. Yeah, great, great stuff from him going around the outside there. That took quite a lot of bravery. He's quite wide in turn one. And I've got to say it, that Ashton's not given up easily, is he? He's going to try and go for the switchback, I think, as they come into the hairpin now after the chicane. I don't think he's going to get it done there. But what a brilliant move from Jamie Ayres. And that just goes to show his race craft is completely on point in this car. And he really knows what he's doing with it. And um, he'll be looking to chase down Benjamin Mews and Taylor Lane now to try and get a little bit further up the grid for onto, uh, and onto the back of those two AM drivers of course if you look at the AM standings at the moment Ben Mears still leading the way for Auto Mcnock Hill Taylor Lane and Jordan Giddings are second and third in that category for Beast Racing and then you've got um, that is I've just got HAR on there I can't seem to see that person's name Carl Hardy of course Result Clothing he's fourth in that category at the moment with Roy Viverke uh, Benjamin Mears' teammate for Auto Mcnock Hill uh, Lane has actually taken the lead of the category now he's just beaten him to it they did very similar lap times last time around you can see him coming out of the uh, first corner but Charlie Summers then, still up front now, ahead of Williams and Van Gogh. They're going to want to work together to try and catch up, but it's easier said than done when it's Charlie Summers at the front. Charlie, of course, was running up front at Monza, uh, but having internet connectivity issues. And um, unfortunately, he got turned when the, uh, the car reappeared in the middle of the track last time, but it was uh, no fault of his own, but it was just one of those unfortunate things. As you can see, Scott Malcolm going a little bit slowly in front of these guys there, so hopefully he... Uh, gets out of the way if they catch up but this battle actually Tom I mean while they are quite spread out it still could be anybody's game if you just make one mistake and uh, slow the pace up a little bit you can quite easily get uh, caught up by the guys behind yeah this MX-5 I think is a hard car to master it's easy to drive and we've said that before but it can only take Charlie Summers I don't want to commentate his curse him so I'm going to call it beforehand that I don't um, it only takes one of the drivers to put one wheel on the grass and if it starts to go they're a very difficult car to actually catch in the slide um, unless your name is Jamie Ayres obviously then you could just give it the full formula drift all the way around the lap but um, <laughs> as he does on a, as he does for his celebratory uh, slowdown laps but no I think um, I think it is anyone's guess I mean Charlie Summers isn't pulling away a massive amount is he you can see there Craig Williams and Pete Van Gogh are still scrapping but they're keeping a calm head. We've got two laps to go now, and I, I honestly still think it's anyone's guess. Um, we see them coming down the back straight, and there really doesn't seem to be too much in it. But they are coming up to back markers now, so hopefully those guys will get out of the way when they see what's coming up in their mirrors. You just see the sector times there. Uh, William, uh, Williams was tenth of a second slower than Summers in sector one, but the other two sectors, sorry, three sectors, he was uh, he was gaining on him. So. Um, Looks like that Williams has got a bit of an advantage over Summers later on in the lap there, Charles. Yeah, it's, um, well, I don't know, you know. it Like I said before, it just takes one little mistake and you can easily lose it all. But Charlie's been very consistent and he has been all season. And since I first started watching him, you can just see the sector times at the bottom of the screen there. Nice little feature that we've uh, brought in for this one. And thank you, of course, to... Uh, it's Pascal Higlin who sorts out our... Uh, our overlays are always looking nice and sharp. And Alex obviously doing a lot of work with him on that as well. So thank you, Mr. Simpson. Um, 
brilliant to see though these guys are still scrapping even after the damage that was caused earlier Tom they're just not letting off at all Peter Van Gogh with one of the most mangled front ends we've seen on MX-5 tonight and still up there in third pushing away but Craig Williams though well he's got the uh, sort of corresponding mangled back end of that car to, uh, to go with it then onto the final lap it looks like McNally and Hefford can't quite get close enough to do something about these guys but I'm sure that Van Gogh's going to take this right down to the wire just talking about the uh, the AM category again as well. Taylor Lane still just ahead of Benjamin Mears, but they're doing very similar lap times. Lane was just under a tenth of a second slower last time round. As we see Nick McCarran in 16th. Great battle here between Joe McDonald, Mick Barry and Max Wright. Mick Barry trying to go to the outside. Joe trying to go late on the brakes. Runs a little bit wide. Mick Barry's going to put the car down the inside now nearly making contact but Joe's got the run just carries the momentum there Tom and he just gives him the uh, the opportunity to get away a little bit doesn't it as we see Summers now one lap well one corner to go yeah Summers one corner to go then but looking back you've got Van Gogh has a little look on Craig Williams as they go into the last corner but I think Williams has got this one done as your number number well sorry P1 Charlie Summers in the number 36 car comes across the line Steve Hefford on the grass have a look at Jack Ashton and Jamie Ayres and let's see if Ashton can capitalise and get the run I don't think he will so Jamie Ayres comes home in P8 behind him in the background there you've got Jordan Giddings all the cars getting off on the grass aren't they there Chaz and then we've got the uh, battle for 18th here Michael Barron Joe McDonald and I think this is going to be a close one isn't it they're going to push each other out oh, wide Max now right. they're in three wide Max Wright involved as well but Michael Barry does oh. take it um, so some brilliant racing out there Charles I've got to say this evening has been full of excitement for us um, and the guys have been putting on a great show you can see the Swift Cooper eSports car of Charlie Summers there number 36 a well deserved win for him he, uh, he capitalised on the incident of uh, Craig Williams and Pete Van Gaal and then just went on to take the win so a nice cool and collected race win for him for race 3 this evening and uh, the car with no damage on it there at all so it just goes to show how cleanly he drove so your race three winning there charlie summers doing a bit of showboating probably so uh Chaz can get some nice sexy screenshots of it <laughs> indeed and i will certainly try but well, well deserved that really good result so far for uh, swift cooper of course doing a really good job this evening they've been up there for all three races and of course charlie has taken i'm trying to think how many wins he's had this season i know he's had at least one so far i think but I'm sure he'll be happy with that, as you can see uh, the other guys getting involved with the donuts as well. And we now have the uh, results on screen, Tom. Yeah, so Charlie Summers is your race three winner for Swift Cooper Esports. Behind him is Craig Williams and Pete Van Gaal rounds out your podium. Adam and Ali in fourth is Steve Heffert in fifth. Uh, your AM race winner was Taylor Lane for Beast Racing. Well deserved for him and Benjamin Muse in seventh. Jamie Ayers in eighth. Jack Ashton in ninth. Jordan Giddings was in tenth. Carl Haldi 11th, Roy Viverke in 12th, Alex Cherney in 13th, James McRitchie in 14th, Kip Stevens in 15th and Nick McCarran in 16th, uh, Michael Barry 17th, Joe McDonald just behind him in 18th, a good uh, good battle for those guys, Jason Cooper in 19th and Ryan Walker in 20th, playing with the uh, <laughs> playing with it again Alex, <laughs> uh, 21st was Anthony Ainsworth, Jordan McLeod in 22nd, Mikey, Mikey Key in 23rd, Dave Hampton in 24th, Scott Malcolm in 25th, uh, your own Urs in 26th, Max Wright, sorry, 27th, Rob Graham in uh, 28th, and your non-finishers were David Ayres, Alan McCain, Luke Cooper, Billy Rose, Carl Jacolette, Ashley Beard, and Brian Holmes. I'm always playing with it. You should know that. But uh, <laughs> that's, a different, that's a different story. <laughs> let's let's not let anybody crop that out of context anyway. Um, that's going to so... get clipped. <laughs> Brilliant third race of the night, guys. Um, just to bring you in on it as well, Alex. Um, more frantic racing, but not too many incidents, really. It's um, there's, there's an elusive incident out there somewhere, I think, on this narrow track, don't you reckon? Yeah, uh, I think so. I mean, that was yeah, that was good racing, that one as well. And right at the front, a little bit of contact, but, uh, you know, nothing but hard hard racing going on there. That's great. Yeah, I've, uh, this combo is just, it's just working. So, um, yeah, you're right. The um, conditions have pretty much carried over from race two so you give the guys an idea what to expect I think with the extra grip levels that they had out there so it'd be interesting to see what happens in race four whether or not the um sort of the night starts to settle in just a little bit and we're under the, the well the headlights I'm sure will will come on 
final race. It should be uh, should be interesting, but it doesn't look like uh, track temps are going to drop too much lower, though. So, um, again, hopefully, as long as everyone's done a bit of practice in the night and can spot their breaking points, we should be in for a final treat in oh, the uh, fourth and final one. Well, hopefully as well, it won't be too cloudy, so we get a nice little bit of sunset as we go into it, but uh, that will remain to be seen. Um, we should have a final, well, for the final time for tonight, uh, I can't go my words out, final time tonight, Alex, your uh, reverse grid wheel, of course. Indeed it is. Straight into it. Uh, spin. Mixed bag so far tonight. What are we going to end up with? Reasonable spin. It could be a small one. It could end on 15, which is the smallest reverse grid we can get. It's definitely not going to make it to 4 minus 4. 15th it is. Okay, and that puts Kip Stevens on pole position in the 11 car, with James McRitchie in the 22 car, second on the grid. Alex Cherney and Roy Viverke make a very tasty row too, with Carl Hardy and Jordan Giddings making up row three. So, great mix of uh, guys that are usually at the top of the am standings there, and some really quick pro drivers as well. And for the final time tonight, if you join me, Tom, and Alex on the iRacing Esports Network again in about 10-15 minutes, we will bring you the fourth and final race of the evening as we get under lights. Don't go away.
Welcome back to the iRacing Esports Network and Sakuba for the BSR MX5 Winter Series for the fourth and final race of the evening. We've got some nice sunset conditions here. Uh, Chaz Draycott with Tom Jacobs and Alex Simpson in the booth tonight. Uh, fantastic three races so far tonight, Tom. So hopefully for the final one, we uh, should have a really nice belter with some uh, gorgeous lighting conditions. Yeah, I think Sakuba looks absolutely gorgeous in this light, doesn't it? So uh, oh, I racing of yeah, it does. I racing have really excelled themselves on these um, on these new conditions, especially that shot there of everyone just yeah, that looks pretty gorgeous that one. So yeah, I think we should um, we're going to have a, a nice decent race. Um, I think for race four, as we uh, I think we're about to get underway, aren't we? It's um, the lights, everyone's gridding up, and the lights the lights are about to come on. To quote F197. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so it's lights out and away we go then everyone seems to get off to a decent start Kip Stevens out in front and uh, he's got Alex Cherney and James Ritchie for company as well see Kip Stevens still out in front and leading the pack away everyone seems to be through quite nicely at the moment and uh, no real argy-bargy but it's down to this hairpin where everything seems to come undone most of the time there's a bit of contact in the background that I can hear, but no one seems to be round. I think everyone's through nice and cleanly. So James Ritchie has taken the lead from Kip Stevens and Alex Cherney in P3. Oh, and that's all. Oh, that, that's McNally off in the background. Chaz on the calls there as standard. <laughs> but um, yeah, apart from apart from unfortunate McNally there, Chaz, everyone's through cleanly at the moment. Yeah, real shame for Adam though. He's had quite a strong night to be fair. I think he's been quite consistent from what I've seen. Uh, he's not completely dropped to the back of the field, but there was a couple of guys lost a few places, Luke Cooper and Rob Graham being amongst them. But uh, nice stream of cars as always. Mick Barry with a, uh, a damaged front end on his car. Well, look at the uh, the shine as they, uh, they go around there. Some fantastic lighting conditions as we set at the top of it. Oh, Taylor Lane on the dirt in the background. We've got two Swift Cooper Esports cars near the front end, and James McRitchie, the AM category driver, is leading the way as we look at Taylor there in the midfield. Lovely reflections off the cars, though. It still does, like, it just amazes me how good this sim looks now. If you go back two years and compare it, it's just incredible. Laying down the inside, then having a good scrap with Craig Williams. Steve Hefford holding him up a little bit in front, but that's the uh, concertina effect that we were talking about earlier, Tom. It's very, very easy for them to slow each other down here because you've just got to avoid one another as we see Carl Hardy fighting for his life against Jamie Ayres now as they go into the hairpin. Yeah, so Cardi's going to still kick to the inside line. Jamie Ayres in the number four car is going to try and go round the outside. And they've got Jordan Giddings for company as well. So some great battles coming on here around the track. But as you say, it is a... Um, yeah, it's, it's one of them to try and avoid each other going into the corners. Jordan Giddings coming under pressure now from Jack Ashton. And Ashton has got the inside line. He's got on the curve. The car gets a bit out of shape. And I think that was, uh, that was Jordan Giddings' saviour and grace there because uh, I don't, otherwise I think Ashton would have got the move done but it's cost Ashton some places in the process so it really is tactical driving around here as we say Chaz um, you really need to have your wits about you because uh, you don't know when there's going to be any sort of MX-5 coming round as the guys out in front of us we've got a spinner and I think that's is that Cherney? No, no, it's not Jenny. It's Richie. Richie. Well, yeah, I'll let you call them from now on. <laughs> <laughs> You're like a walking spotters guide, aren't you? So, um, <laughs> yeah, so we've got the uh, Alex Cherney and uh, Kip Stevens out in front of Swift Coop Free Sport with Roy Verke behind him for Auto Metcalf Hill. Rounds out your top three at the oh, moment. Okay. Oh, cry it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just have to. I just have yeah. to. Oh, oh that's boy. a big boy. That's, that's a bit of an awkward rejoin that one. <laughs> and uh, not really what you want to be doing around Sakubo, which is uh, about as about as wide as a pencil. So um, I love the way yeah. you're just casual about. It. Bit of an awkward rejoin. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure who it was who was in front of Luke Cooper. I bet yeah. he wasn't saying that. No, Luke, I think Luke Cooper's just got into cardiac arrest. I'm not sure if he's going to stop on track, but. That must have been a bit of a focusing moment as we see his two teammates battling for lead here. Kip Stevens, allegedly from Bermuda, against Alex Cherney, who I'm pretty sure is from Germany. Um, into the hairpin then. They're actually making a bit of a breakaway here. They've got Roy Haverke in third. Roy's doing really well in the AM category recently. He was up there in uh, Monza as well. And he's got Mick Ritchie behind him with possibly the greatest username on YouTube that I know of. He's actually called James McRitch T. So, fair play. And his profile picture is actually a picture of the biscuit as well, yeah. Jamie has given him a bit of a push, saying, come on, where's my brew? He's uh, going around the hairpin, giving him a shove. But 
yeah, four laps down already, Tom. The, these shorter laps and these uh, these smaller tracks for these cars just fly by. These races, honestly, I mean, we always say it, four races a night, you may think it's a bit a bit much, but they just fly by, and before you know it, you finish commentating for the night, and you've had a great time. Jamie S is having a great time out on the dirt, so is Jordan Giddings going with him, turning it to a bit of a beach over there. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Oh, oh. oh you got to feel that in the morning. Yeah, you, you literally, I think he's glad he's got his hands device on. He went through the windscreen on that one. So, um, but apart from, I think, the odd incident around the circuit, I think we've seen some really clean racing this evening. Um, I can hear more contact in the background. As you see Jordan McGlone on the shot there. And Pete Van Gogh is right in the thick of things, isn't he? He'll be chasing, chasing down the likes of Taylor Lane and Jack Ashton. And um, so, you know, it's we see more guys going out on, onto the uh, onto the grass as well. But you were saying, Chaz, that it provides some great racing, and we were saying in the break as well. Alex said that I think this combo really does work. I was a bit questionable uh, towards it at the start, but it's provided some great racing. And I, I think I have to say I prefer the uh, the MX5s on a Tuesday night. Um, on these shorter tracks, I think. I think oh. the longer tracks is uh, <laughs> Craig Williams. Son, <laughs> Craig Williams just sideways on the grass there. But um, yeah, I think Tsukuba is. I think it's one of my favourite tracks for MX5. I don't know how you boys feel about it. Oh yeah, definitely. This is just it's it's just a fantastic combo, and the lighting as well on these things looks awesome right now. Some great reflections around certain corners. Air's trying to go around the outside of uh, Roy Viverke. Uh, McRitchie has gone to the front of the AM battle in the meantime, of course. So Roy doesn't really want to be losing these places. He wants to try and uh, get back up there with him, but he's got a good gap behind him then to Carl Hardy, who is trying to defend from Jordan Giddings in the background. They're the next two AM drivers there. But, yeah, really good spread at the moment for these guys. But Cherney in the lead, as we see his teammate Kip Stevens having a little bit of a uh, connection issue there, but he's all right. And once again, oh, Zares comes out there to defend from Williams. I think, actually, he went to overtake Viverke and didn't realise Williams was uh, that close to him. We had a bit of a close shave in the World GT. That's Viverke around. Charlie Summers puts him around. Who's he going to get caught by? Taylor Lane avoids him just. Oh, I think Taylor Lane's going to have spun that. Is he going to come back into shot sideways? He hit the wall there, actually. Yeah. He hit the wall quite hard. Um, I don't know. Yeah, Giddings as well. That was... A, that would have been an exciting moment, wouldn't it? Coming out of the last corner yeah. and just seeing this MX-5 wall parked in the middle oh, of the... Uh, good yeah, he did. He hit the wall quite, yeah, he hit the wall quite hard there. Um, th the car doesn't seem too bad, does it? No. It um, seems to have got away with it, and the car's still going. I'm not sure whether the steering wheel is going to be off-centre. I imagine it might be a little bit, but it seems to be all right for now. He's only got to last another uh, another six laps anyway, so he might be able to get just about get it to the end. As we see Alex Cherney now coming under pressure from Ellis, Steven Ellis Stevens. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So, um, yeah, a great battle forming at the front, isn't it? Cherney on the inside. Stevens, sorry, Cherney on the outside. Stevens on the inside. Stevens does manage to hold his own in that damaged car but this is teammates racing teammates and what you don't want is a Baku 2018 for Red Bull that is the last thing that you want at the end of the day you don't want teammates coming together Journey tries to stick it up the inside of number 19 car and he has got that move done now so it's Swift Cooper Esports out in front first and second followed by James McRitchie Steve Hefford and Jamie Ayres round out your top five and Chaz I think uh, race four is proving to be quite an exciting one here yeah, seems a little bit more tame in terms of uh, less incidents, a bit of argy-bargy as you were saying before, but yeah, this is uh, a nice one to round out the night with. Not going to quite go under lights, as I said earlier, so uh, ignore that, but here we are. We're still getting a pretty sunset, though. It looks brilliant, and hopefully these guys aren't going to do a Red Bull Istanbul 2010 either, Tom. Um, <laughs> another little reference, or uh, the one I'm pretty sure you'd be happy about is uh, Catalonia 2016. The yeah. Uh, or was it 2015? No, it was 2016, wasn't it? 2016 with the uh, the famous Hamilton with his uh, head in his hands. And uh, I cheered. I, will, I won't lie. So, um, yeah, just a little bit, a few references for you. A bit of uh, bit of nostalgia there to round off the evening. As we see the two Swift Cooper esports guys now starting to... Uh, well, you've got Steve Hefford in the mix now and Jamie Ayres, haven't you? With uh, And McRitchie is in a Swift Cooper esports and Simlab racing sandwich at the moment. 
so he'll um but he's holding his own he's a bit richie he's doing quite well here Chaz, and i think he needs to give himself a pat on the back at the end of this race because his defense in this in race four has been absolutely brilliant so far yeah he could give himself a biscuit i suppose um you've got charlie summers chasing chasing if i uh, get the words right this pack as well so another swift cooper esports car getting involved here as well craig williams just been overtaken but it's just between Cherney and uh, Stevens at the moment, isn't it? They've just got to sort of sort it out between themselves. We see Brian Holmes now with Max Wright tucked up right behind him. Just ahead of them is Benjamin Mears. And I believe ahead of him is Taylor Lane in the Beast Racing car. Then you've got Hampson and Ryan Walker in the number 97 car as well. Great little train, this. Nice little spread of Ams. Oh, down the inside of Ashton. That was Cooper. And I can hear contact. There's a car around. Was there? That's, there was a car sideways, at least. I think it was Van Gogh getting a little bit out of shape. Nearly an incident there. Giddings getting involved as well behind. But look at this between Ashton and Cooper. Fantastic scrapping. Bit of damage on both cars. Bonnet's lifted up slightly. But Ashton's got it done. Oh, in the background, that's Taylor Lane. Winner of the AM category in race three. And he's had a bit of a uh, a bit of a rough and tumble race four, Tom. We saw him dodging, uh, dodging a stationary car earlier. And now he's been turned around out of the hairpin. Yeah, unfortunate for him, but he has been going well all night, hasn't he? His teammate Jordan Giddings at Beast Racing as well. Um, they've been having, they've been on fire this evening in the AM category. Uh, they've been always up there in podium positions. And at the moment, they've still got one driver in the name of Jordan Giddings for Beast Racing in the uh, on the AM podium. So, um, yeah, I, th I think it's unfortunate for Taylor. He's been having a really good evening so far, but this train at the front is really starting to hot up. We've got four laps to go now and uh, we're on lap 11 and um, I think it's still anyone's guess at the moment here Chaz it's you know you've got McRitchie there holding his own he's still in that sim labs uh, sandwich then you've got you've got the uh, Swift Cooper Esports boys all around them as well and Charlie Summers he is not backing off is he he's got Hefford is really going to have to work for this one in the number 72 car as they do touch Charlie Summers gives him a little love tap uh, going into the last hairpin and um, let's see if he can categorise on this in the, the little bit of slipstream that he's going to get along the straight. Charlie Summers right up the back of Steve Hefford now to go into the last corner and he doesn't go for a move through there, which I think is wise until the uh, very last minute. You don't want to be ruining your race towards the end of this lap. So uh, at the end of the day, Chaz, who's your money on? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw that one to you. Who is your money on for this race win? I think Cherney's going to stick it up at the front until uh, until the very end. I think Stevens is going to play rear gunner a little bit now, do a bit of a Rosberg or a bit of a Bottas, depending on what year you want to look at. And McRitchie, though, has to be said, he's, he's done a great job, really has. Um, as, even though he is classified as an AM, obviously it's not a sort of a statement of fact as such, but, yeah, it doesn't mean he's slower than them. But, I mean, to be in a different category, obviously it's uh, analysed off your previous results and other algorithms that... Probably don't make much sense to many people, but we'll see. But yeah, he's, he's sticking it up there with Jamie Ayres, um, Steve Hefford, as you can see as well. Summers and Williams is still in that battle. So yeah, nice little scrap this. You can see on the mini map in the bottom, uh, sorry, top right corner of your screen, there is a big gap back to eighth place, but that looks like a fantastic battle in itself. That's Jack Ashton leading the way from Cooper and then Hardy. And those guys are just coming into the final corner now. But look at this, these guys getting all out of shape as they go out of the final corner. Cherney trying everything he can to try and pull away, but McRitchie really pushing to try and get past Stevens here. Doing a fine job. And of course, if you are enjoying the stream this evening and uh, have enjoyed what we've done so far and you want to see it again, don't forget to subscribe to the iRacing Esports Network and you can click the little bell icon on the, uh, on the page as well, which means you will be notified of future videos. So you'll get uh, notifications of when we're next going to be live. And of course, hop over to Apex Racing TV as well. We do do uh, a lot of broadcasts over the course of a week as contact there between Cherney and Stevens. That's not going to help them out. And uh, we do also, obviously, on Apex stream over on Twitch and Facebook as well. So multiple platforms at once. So keep an eye out for those coming in the short, uh, sorry, in the near future. And in the near future, could be an accident if Stevens doesn't calm down a little bit here, Tom. I think uh, he's, he's taking it a bit... Well, Mc, McBarry's taking it quite seriously, getting out of the way. But Stevens is going for it here on Cherney. Two laps to go. Should they be fighting like this? I I think if I was 
if this was real life and I was their team manager, I'd be saying, look, I'd be doing a Eddie Jordan 98 at Spa, just saying I'd, <laughs> I probably wouldn't race too hard, boys. But as you see, Mr. Stevens trying to go around the outside through the hairpin. This has brought McRitchie into it as well. And I think McRitchie's got the run on Stevens, hasn't he? But uh, Stevens has still got the inside line, but Rick Ritchie all over the back of him. And this has brought Jamie Ayres and Stephen Heffern into play as well. And this really is anyone's guess, but all the while, Cherney's starting to pull out a bit of a lead on the guys in front, uh, guys behind him, sorry. And uh, we've got one lap to go after this. They're coming up towards traffic as well. And there's going to be quite a lot of bravery going into this corner. I'm going to hold my breath as we go into this, because I think this might... Oh, but Richie manages to hold his line against Jamie Ayres. I didn't hold my breath there, actually. I carried on talking. <laughs> but um, oh, but Richie defending really hard now. He's brought Summers into play. You've got Jamie Ayres in there, Steve Hefford. Summers is going up the inside of Steve Hefford now. The two teammates at the front still fighting. They're side by side. Kip Stevens still putting the pressure on Alex Journey out front. Oh, and Alex no. Journey is round the number 19 car. He's into the wall. He'll get it going again, but that's put Kip Stevens in front. Not what Swift Cooper Esports would have wanted, but that's brought McRitchie and could, could possibly get his first win here. But he's got coming under a lot of pressure. The number four of Jamie Ayres. And Chaz, this is too close to call. Yeah, I was just about to say at the beginning of the lap, McRitchie needs to be careful here because he's going to get in an incident and he's going to lose his arm win. He's done the right thing in letting Ayres go, but silly little incident for Stevens and Cherney it didn't need to happen Alex has recovered great there though because he's actually still in seventh in the background so he's gone out before this battle in front of us but Jamie Ayres isn't going to be able to gain that much ground and uh, not sure how happy he's going to be about it but Kip Stevens takes the win then Jamie Ayres second great drive by McRitchie in, uh, in third place there he's going to be very very happy with that uh, Charlie Sullivan's fourth and then Williams in fifth Hefford 6, Cherney 7, look at this battle over the line, that's George Giddings, Carl Hardy and Adam McNally, 3 wide over the line almost, Giddings finishing 2nd in the AM category, great result for Jordan there, another solid night for him and Beast Racing of course, we'll be happy with that and we'll have chats with them later, Scott Malcolm, Euro Nursum and I believe that is Ashley Beard there involved as well, Joe McDonald in the background constant battles out of that final corner it's all about carrying the momentum so you can always gain one or two places as you come onto what is a very short straight but Kip Stevens then taking a brilliant win shame to see it end the way it did between him and his teammate but I'm sure they'll be uh, having words with each other about that but we did make a, enough references to it Tom about uh, previous F1 <laughs> incidents between teammates that bit of a multi 2-1 that wasn't it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah just a bit so um yeah, I think it was a long-term commentator's curse there. But, yeah, great result for Kip Stevens, though. He did a great job keeping it up front, and that's a massive drift, whoever's just on that into the pit lane. Fair play. <laughs> Gorgeous bit of reflection off the track there, as you as well you can see. But what an awesome, awesome night of racing that was. That was great to watch, and I hope you've all enjoyed it at home as well, because, well, we have, and <laughs> it's just awesome. Yeah, it was great racing, wasn't it? I'll reiterate what Chad said. I hope you all enjoyed it at home as much as we did up in the commentary box. So your uh, results here. Kip Stevens takes the race win for race four. Well-deserved win from him, although a bit of contact with his teammate, but I'm sure they'll discuss it afterwards. Jamie Ayres finishes in second. A great, great recovery drive from him. He moved up eight places um, from his starting position. James, James McVitie's <laughs> was, uh, came home in P3 um, and is your AM race winner. Charlie Summers in fourth with Craig Williams in fifth. Steve Hebert in sixth with Alex Jennings in seventh after unfortunately falling off at the end. Jack Ashton in eighth. Pete Van Gaal in ninth. Jason Cooper in tenth. Brian Holmes is in... Uh, there we go. Brian Holmes is in 11th. Ryan Walker in 12th. Jordan Giddings, P2 in the AM category in 13th. Adam McNally in 14th. Carl Hardy rounds out the podium for the AM category in 15th. Max Wright, 16th. With Benjamin Mews in 17th. Nick McCarran in 18th. Uh, 19th was Taylor Lane. 20th, Carl Jackalette. 21st, Luke Cooper. Roy Viverke in 22nd. Dave Hampson in 23rd. Scott Malcolm in 24th. Jeroen Ersum, 25th. Ashley Beard, 26th. Jordan McGlone was 27th. Uh, Rob Graham was 28th. And your non-finishers, Joe McDonald, Michael Barry, Mike Key, Billy Rose, Anthony Ainsworth, Alan McCain and David Ayres. Thank you very much, Tom. Fantastic fourth race of the night there once again. And it really did sum up an awesome night of racing. Um, a lot of battles, a lot of action, and 
couple of incidents, but yeah, we avoided that elusive uh, sort of pile up as such. We had a bit of a mess in the, uh, I think it was early on in the second race, but not too bad really. Only a couple of cars were taken out by that, not uh, not all of them. And we should, in just a moment, have a couple of guys in for an interview, still quite soon after the uh, the race finished. Not sure how uh, James McRitchie's name got to be James McVitie's, but um, I'm looking at you, Mr. Simpson. I'm not sure whether that was your <laughs> I'm guessing by that that it was. <laughs> what do I ever? Oh, I'm innocent. I don't do such <laughs> But it's, uh, yeah, what a great night this has been so far. We do have someone in the interview waiting area, actually. Just see whether we can uh, drag him in now for a chat. It's Mr. Ryan Walker. Ryan, um, seemed like a bit of a chaotic night from where we were, but... Uh, it looked like it could have been really, really enjoyable, actually. What a track and car combo that was. Yeah, that was absolutely, that was fantastic race. And I mean, for a first time racing here in the series and in the MX-5, I believe that was absolutely just awesome, awesome fun and epic racing throughout the field. And how did you feel about your results tonight? Were you happy with how you got on? Yeah, I think I got a couple of top 10s and uh, finished 20. The 19 for 20th and uh, 12th in the final race. So, yeah, overall, I'm happy with my results this evening. And, yeah, I wasn't really on the pace, but uh, the results I got tonight, I'm I'll more than happily. And uh, overall, with Excite Energy Esports as well, we saw a lot of their guys uh, near the front of the field in most of those races. Were they happy in terms of, uh, well, from their their voice chat, actually? i tell you what, actually, sorry to uh, to do this, but... We'll bring in uh, Mr. Adam McNally as well from Excite Energy Sports. Um, Adam, I was just asking Ryan um, as well, of course, how how did it feel from an Excite Energy Esports point of view? Were you, were you guys all pretty happy with your results tonight? Yeah, I had a great night. Bob, Brian having two DNFs, getting caught up in accidents, and Ash in the third one as well. But as a team, we had a great night. Pretty much every race, we had at least one in the top ten. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, I was just saying then... Um, in regards to the actual sort of car track combo as well, it seems like uh, a right laugh. I mean, I imagine you boys were probably all shouting at each other in the chat where you're trying to. Uh, no, it's crazy. <laughs> Pure craziness. This track, it's just the battles are constant. No rest whatsoever. You've always got a car there. And it does actually make for a good race in the MX5. It seemed that way. We uh, we certainly enjoyed it from up here. Um, just going back to you, Ryan, I was just um, trying to... Uh, once again, I do this every single week. I was trying to look at where we are next week, and I've got no idea, so I don't know if you've uh, <laughs> if you've got a calendar or anything up on uh, there. But... I'm just about to have a look right now, because I, I don't know myself. Uh, I think the next track we're at is Road Atlanta, which is one of my favourites, and I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah. Yeah, and uh, is it a track... Well, you say it's one of your favourites. I mean... I've got favourite tracks, but I'm absolutely rubbish at them. Do you feel like you could do well around there? Uh, it depends. Uh, it depends how much time I get to practice, really, because I'm just uh, just busy with. I don't really have the time to practice this season as much as I would hope as I hope to. But it's just. Uh, I mean, I've raced there in the past, uh, last season in the official series, and that seemed to do okay. So. Hopefully, next week I can uh, get get some decent results like uh, tonight, and just. Uh, to see how it goes, but yeah, uh, it's what just one of those tracks. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's always bound to produce mayhem, so it's kind of just luck of luck of, luck of the draw in a way. Yeah, well, hopefully the reverse grid's coming your way, mate. Um, just a quick one as well to you, Adam. Obviously, uh, Road Atlanta. Then, if that is the uh, if that is where we're going, um, it is. is, um, is. Yeah, oh, I there just, we go. I looked it up. We are. Is is it a track you're confident at yeah. as well? Yeah, I do like Road Atlanta. We're more than I like Road America. So, <laughs> yeah. can't wait and, for Road, Road Atlanta. And another big um, slipstreaming opportunity as well down to the chicane at the bottom of the hill. So, maybe incidents. for four top tens. Good that I missed out tonight. I was nearly on a streak of three weeks with four top tens. So, that, that's mate. race. Fair play. Fair play. I didn't actually know. I'm not going to lie. I didn't notice that's where you did, where you finished in all of them. But that's a really good feat, that, mate. To be <laughs> fair, well done on that. Um I'm going to do the same thing I just did again as well, actually. Um, Mr. Ashton joins us, another Excite Energy Esports driver, so a bit of an Excite Energy Esports party. I'll uh, I'll refrain from letting Tom talk about the drink. I was going to say oh, a bit uh... like Saturday, <laughs> an <auto> sport. <laughs> Indeed. Well, obviously, um, Jack, we've, we've just been discussing how chaotic it seemed from up here. Did you enjoy that? 
Oh yeah, absolutely loved it. I mean, I wasn't really uh, thinking it's going to be that good. To be fair, it's going to be. I thought it was going to be carnage, but uh, it actually turned out to be a great race meeting, and especially for me, really four top tens in the whole night. So can't go wrong with that. I think it's probably one of the better results for the points. Very well done, and uh, yeah, you, you joined Tom then with uh, us being a bit sort of sceptical at the beginning, weren't we, Tom? We didn't think it was going to be the best of uh, car track <laughs> combos at first. Yeah, I yeah. think it was just um, I I I thought of the start. I've never really liked Sakuba apart from Forza to go sideways in all the time, but um, no, it provided some really great racing um, at the end of the day, and I think you guys will agree with me that I think this car and track combo just really worked. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, hundred percent. I was, I was a bit. I'm a bit skeptical. Skeptical about uh, radicals on Thursday, though. That uh, that oh, could uh, <laughs> turn into a bit of carnage. But yeah, definitely this car and track combo is the one. Yeah, it certainly uh, is one that we want to see again in future. Um, I'm going to let all three of you go at it at once, boys. But I'm, I'm pretty sure who I know you're going to mention. But um, is there anyone you want to give a shout out to before you go, guys? Yeah, I obviously have to give a big thank you to. XA who took us down to Autosport on Saturday as well and got we got to meet Alex Simpson. So it was yep. a good day then. And obviously for backing us as a team, Jess from the Race for Mentor, Tom's Vehicle Detail and Motorsport Days Live and Race Data Systems. Thanks very and much, obviously, buddy. obviously you lads for the great broadcast. Thanks very much, bud. Absolutely awesome stuff. Well, well done tonight, lads. It's great to see the team doing really well up there and uh, hopefully that'll continue for you all at uh, Road Atlanta as well. Right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks cheers very much, and good job on the broadcast. Yeah. Thanks, right? Nice Checking one, buddy. <laughs> cheers, guys. <laughs> thank you very See much. You See you next week. Awesome to speak to the guys, as always. Absolute pleasure. Plenty of them in that team as well. Really good bunch of guys, and uh, yeah, they all uh, they all met you on the Saturday, didn't they, Alex, at uh, Autosport? Yeah, indeed. I think we were just by the project uh, project cars two stand, and um, yeah, they wandered by and. You know what it's like when you, you, because obviously we know each other by voice and things like that. You know, don't really know each other's faces. Maybe just like the odd profile pick or something like that. Brian was like, Alex. I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, yeah, it's always good to to meet people, put faces to names and stuff like that. Like, you know, like Adam is just is not what I pictured at all. You know what it's like? Yeah. You meet people and they're like, not what you expect at all. Brian too, to be fair. So, but yeah. Uh, it's like it was... everyone expects from me. They think that I'm going to look a bit daft, but they see me and I'm absolutely beautiful. So, you know, it's just they, they're just taken away by the beauty, of course. <laughs> essence, I think, is the word that you're looking for. Your absolute essence. Yeah, indeed. Essence of ludicrous. Anyway, um, it's been an absolute pleasure working with you tonight, boys. Just final thoughts on that one? Um, so again, again next week for me, please. You know, yeah. that was awesome. If we can have a repeat, rinse and repeat, that'd be great. Yeah, I think the same from me as well. I think if we can get, especially what we had in race one, I think if we can get that next week, it'll just it'll just really accelerate this series and make it one of the well, it's already one of the best on the iRacing network, but just really seal its position in, as one of the great. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with you both as always. It's been really good fun and fantastic for hopefully everyone at home as well. We really do hope you have enjoyed it. It's been uh, a real honour to do this and. Yeah, it's definitely changed our minds on how we see Sakuba. Anyway, I'm going to go and uh, drive the MX-5 around it for about three hours, but I don't think it'll be as fun as uh, racing with these lads. But next week, as you heard, we are at Road Atlanta in the BSR MX-5 Winter Series. So join us same time next week on Tuesday night. And from me, Alex and Tom, we wish you a very good evening. See you next time.